Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Shaman King episode number 38. All right, the previous episode, it was the end of the long day. Uh, so many things happened uh, in the previous episode. Uh, Chokolov saved us kind of in a way. He, we saw when like, you know, in a little flash, not flashback, but a recollection that when he went to the other world, he and his, uh, like, you know, his master took him to uh, one, a god uh his name is I, I checked it out i forgot it so i checked it out again his name is pascal abua i think that was his name as far as i could remember and uh you know it's, it's, it's a pretty difficult name to remember so uh, like you know, i checked it out before watching uh before starting this uh reaction but still i kind of forgot but i think it's it was pascal Ab abua or something like that um so yeah uh uh she like you know he made a contract with that like you know uh that uh the guardian spirit and now he can do two oversoul one on top of the other mick is already there and so this is a double oversoul we saw you know his double oversoul and we like you know like we decided to stop the dad uh so another thing kind of happened which uh like you know which was very unusual in a way not unusual but i kind of understand like why uh, he did that is how he basically left them alone i thought they were going to fight but he left them alone and it kind of makes sense because he really wants yo to like you know pro like you know be more stronger and how probably knows that if he actually goes all out now he'll probably defeat yo so he doesn't want that so he won't went back so <laughs> that was that that thing anyways that was that and you know we saved uh red seb and seram's dad and he was like you know like we was we thought that he was going to go away or something uh you know but in comes anna and she's like no you cannot go away you know st uh, stay with us and like you know work with us and stuff so i'm guessing he's joining the crew or something uh <laughs> so who knows but it's good that he's kind of still sticking around because red seb and serum even though uh the dad is not alive maybe they can still like see them see him and kind of like you know like he can still keep them company uh i think he's going to stay i'm not sure like you know we'll have to wait for this episode i'm sure i'll get my answer here uh so yeah that was that and in the end you know the aftermath of this whole thing is chocolate lost his eyesight and it's like you know like his way of uh what do you call it uh his way of repenting you can say and he knows that nothing can like you know like uh abs like you know completely uh make his sins go away nothing can do that like you know the, the thing that he did in his past it has come back in the uh, present to you know as it like as it it goes around the what goes around comes back around it kind of came back so he knows nothing can like you know probably make his sins go away but still like you know like this is his way of repenting and um he like you know i and i think like he this time he really was able to grasp the meaning of his master's words the things that he told him that laughter is the wind which makes everything go away you 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 should make people laugh don't like you know harm them make them laugh and i think this time he really was able to understand the actual meaning behind his master's words and in the end seram gave a little smile so hopefully everything goes well from here onwards you know like you can do anything about the past but you can probably try to strive for the better for the future so yeah anyways um let's get started this is episode number 38 so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it whichever is a preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go what the oh okay okay that, that's what hmm okay yeah like even if they like you know for feet probably how is going to track them hmm 
Okay. Who tried to steal a pet? Wait, who? Wait, he tried to. Wait, what? This is Sil Silva? Oh my god, what is happening? I don't... Oh, Gandhara. Okay. Whoa, so Silva is currently under confinement? Yeah, I think that they're actually letting us know for the first time. Like, it's been a while we saw Silva, but I didn't think that something like this happened to him. And, and Golva said something about he tried to steal the spirits? Like, what's up with that? Okay, I'm sure they'll answer my questions. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Graduation. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, her name is Sati. I don't think so. Wait, who? Oh, Opacho. <laughs> yeah, he he's she. She's always with. How? Oh. <laughs> Wait. Come on, you. What? Um. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh. Wait. Oh my god. What now? Wait, what's she doing here? Yeah. Like, ha like we need to go talk to John. Yeah.
Oh my god, okay. Okay. Yeah, he probably wants to fight. I don't know. But he has a strong sense of responsibility, so... Who knows? Uh. What? Long Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Still, he made a promise. I don't know. Oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, she picked it up. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Oh yeah, Mark, oh my god. And Jan as well. Ugh. True, how do you even convince them? Like... Hmm. Yeah, like, their problem was that they didn't want... Uh, whoa. <laughs> Good guy. Uh. Wait, who? Oh, this is oh that guy. Wait, who? Wait a minute, he's part of the. So he, no, he, not is, he was probably part of the, um, um, x -Laws. Lucifer. Okay. <laughs> He's just sitting there. Mm. 
Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. No, I I don't know. Oh. My god. Ren became very honest like after the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Chocolate is just Wait, what's happening? Oh, this is Jan, okay. I was like, what's that? Okay. Hmm. Whoa. I don't think he can handle maiden. Okay, here we go. Whoa. Okay. What? No. Oh my god. What? Wait, what happened? <coughs> Wait, what did he do? Wait. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's what he was actually talking about. You, you're going to kill him. So, obviously he'll do that. Okay. Yes, come on. Okay. Ah, oh, but it's still... Oh. 
Oh my god. Calm down, Marco. Yeah, we know. Oh. He's losing his cool. He's losing his cool. <laughs> oh my god, this guy. Oh, here he comes. Clean up. Oh, uh, what? Luckiest. Um, no, thank you. Oh, he he took his glasses off. My God. Oh, team star. Yeah, yeah, this is the same. Wow, just like that. Okay, here we go. I think this is called Lucifer. Yeah, oh my god, this is a full on mech. Is this like a fallen angel or something? What the? Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this guy is also on another level. Lucky Slasso. Wait, so who, where did Jun come from then? Oh my god. Oh! Bound for your home city. Um. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, okay, thanks, I guess. Short. 
<laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Fuck. Oh. Vale. Uh. Wait. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. This is something that I didn't always, uh, they, I doubt they said this. Yeah. What's John doing? I'm sorry, Marco's dress is extremely weird. Hmm. Being able to have a smile on your face afterward. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my god. Whoa, this this went in a direction I was not expecting. Like what? Okay, um Okay, a few things we got to know him there here in this episode. Alright, let's uh talk about this one by one. Mm. In the beginning we see Goldva and you know the patch tribe them talking about uh the you know the people who are left and who will be fighting this that and you know all that stuff now they said something about uh silva uh doing something okay here it is um i'm talking of the traitor who tried to steal our patched treasure the five grand elemental spirits okay um wait so The traitor who tried to stun Okay, okay, I understand. <coughs> they I think the translation here is a little bit kind of a little bit different. They skipped something here. Which is here we go. He says, I'm talking of the traitor who tried to steal our patches treasure, the five grand elemental spirits. And that's what it says in the sub. But uh, as far as I could gather from the voice, okay. Yeah, he says that uh, the spirit, the grand elemental spirits, except the spirit of fire, uh, excluding the spirit of fire. Like uh, at that moment, I was only reading the subtitles, so I thought, wait a minute, isn't like you know, it's they're saying here the five uh, uh, like you know elemental spirits. He tried to steal it, but one of it is with how. So how how is it like you know how 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 was he how did he try to steal all of them? 
But then, like, you know, now that I'm uh, listening to it again, he, he does mention that except the spirit of fire, which makes a lot more sense. Okay, so basically, so he tried to steal the other uh, uh, spirits, elemental, grand elemental spirits. I don't know why, but maybe, who knows? And we see that he is currently captured and there's uh, like, you know, Goldweiss saying, oh, we need to do something about this. He, like, you know, she, uh, she tells two of the patch uh, tribe members, uh, said, tells that you are in charge of Silva's rehabilitation. And uh, yeah, that was that. And we've always seen like, you know, Golva is extremely neutral. He doesn't want to go in either way. Uh, she, uh, sorry, she doesn't want to go in either way. She, she's always like, you know, like, yeah, whoever will win is the one who will be uh, the rightful, um, uh, the rightful possessor of uh, the grand, uh, like, you know, like, uh, not possess, sorry, uh, who, uh, the person who will win will be the shaman king and be it, uh, that be that person even if it's even even if the person is bad or good it doesn't matter he just wants to see the one who is worthy enough to do that to get that position and that's what she wants to do so no interference nothing she wants with any of them so obviously i'm guessing like you know silva probably tried to interfere into that by trying to steal those grand elemental spirits so yeah <coughs> Okay, that was that. And then in the next scene, we see um, uh, Yo and his, not his crew, but Yo, Manta and uh, Ryu as well. They were talking, Ryu is like, oh, look at the Gandhara, they're so great. And here we meet Opacho. No, we, we've already met Opacho, but uh, Yo meets Opacho. And <laughs> she's kind of funny, <laughs> I have to say. I, don't, I didn't think she would have this type of a personality. Like uh, always, like you know, up until now, I've I've seen him uh, her with how all the time. So <laughs> you know, like she she's always quiet and doesn't talk much. Kind of like you know, gives her own opinions on stuff and only talks to how. That's all I've seen her do. Uh, so suddenly, her seeing her here, like you know, in a completely different situation, talking with other people. And that was not surprising. I was surprised by her, um, the way she interacted. She, <laughs> she has a funny personality. <laughs> oh my god. She's like, oh. Okay, yeah. And she, wait, so her oversoul is becoming a sheep? Wait a minute. Okay. Okay, hair. Oh, so she uses her. No, wait, what? Oversoul? Hair in. And she, she uses the, the band in her head. I think that's the intermediary. Most probably. Yeah. And she turns into a sheep, which is called Mama. <laughs> this part is so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> I I really was not expecting that, <laughs> and he was like so cute, <laughs> and he gets defeated as soon, and she's strong. Obviously, we can see that she just like kicks Ru away just like that, and <laughs> I feel like like you know her um voice acting uh, the way like you know she talks that like you know um a coupled with the way she suddenly became a little sheep <laughs> that that was like you know that over like that heightened the cute factor even more <laughs> uh, okay and then we see she's like joining them in meals and stuff as well and she like so she's she has been <coughs> told to come here and keep an eye on yo and like you know make him uh, join back into the shaman uh, fight because how wants that and that's why she is hanging around like you know uh, hanging around yo to make to convince him to get in back into the shaman fight or obviously the, or she's like you know like what do you call it uh, she's saying that yeah if, if you don't do that like how will kill um, the two kids and you know like all that stuff 
so yeah now <laughs> okay then we get a little scene with amida maru amida maru tells him to choose whatever that he wants to do now here's one thing like um i was thinking that um like i'm sure like you know like i'm sure that yo wants to get back into the fight but the thing here is yo is very um keeps his words you know he keeps his words so i was thinking probably that would kind of bother him because he did promise uh jan that he won't get into the shaman fight he will forfeit if uh ryu is brought back to life and like you know that's like a promise that he gave them gave the ex laws so he's going to break that and yo being yo obviously i thought he was going to be a little bit concerned about that he was quite of concerned about that but um like you know i i i was kind of surprised to see him actually taking the decision so quickly and <coughs> her decide him deciding that yeah i'll go and actually uh try to convince you know marco and uh, the others uh, if if they don't get convinced i'll probably beat them up <laughs> that's what he decided so yeah like it makes sense like he like technically he isn't breaking his like you know words he just went to kind of convince them that's just what he did you know he has still not broken his words he went to convince them and, and i'm sure if after he is able to uh, convince them hopefully he he'll then join after that like that's why i said you know like yo really puts a lot of um what do you call it a lot of importance to promises and i i was sure that he wouldn't break a promise like that it, and because like you know if this was probably someone else they would probably be like ah oh, okay like yeah i did make a promise but um, since like you know these two kids are in danger yeah i'll i'll break the promise but even in this like in a situation even when uh, red seb and serum are probably hostages in this situation you can call them hostage in this situation because obviously like you know how said that that he's going to come and kill them if yo doesn't get in so even in this type of situation yo yo was like you know what i i won't break my promise let me just go and convince them so yeah that's that's obviously what i expected from yo and um, yeah and he although he was kind of hesitating a little bit because he himself wasn't properly like you know sure as to what he himself wants to do but then like you know amita maru like you know get talked with him and <coughs> convinced him and he was like okay so even if i do want to get back my oracle bell is gone so what do i do <laughs> in comes anna she's like here you go you you dropped this <laughs> oh boy and uh, yeah and anna he also talks with anna a little bit as well anna says that you you promised me uh so you know like i i, I was supposed to become the wife of the shaman king but what do i do now you know like <laughs> i'm at a problem now and then she's like but you did save ren so that's a good thing <laughs> <coughs> but yeah go and talk to them and yo was like okay then i'll go and talk with them and make them convince them and then i'll go back to the shaman fight again opacho was watching all of that and here we get a little scene of what was his name um lu lu no okay yeah um lakis lasso that's his name lakis <clears throat> okay here we get to see that he was actually a former member of the ex laws not a former member but he's a founder so okay um and <coughs> <coughs> he was like okay now i need to go and meet marco and talk with him so basically he was waiting for yo to actually go and talk to marco and um and he took this opportunity to come and meet marco himself as well now okay like uh, yo goes to marco and you know like they start talking about stuff Marco is like, oh, you know, like I I knew it, you know, I knew it. You won't go, you weren't going to keep your promise. You you are here to uh, cause violence over here, just like how how uses violence to do whatever he wants. Like you you are the same, you know, you're nothing dissimilar. 
you're probably a fragment of him and since he is also like you know like gaining power you're also gaining power this that he's continuously like you know <laughs> trying to like you know make this weird type of a connection between how and yo and like one thing i've always like you know like it's very apparent as we see uh, marco we always realize that he's very impulsive you know like i'm sure there must be some reason why he's he freaks out so much like you know like and his his weird obsession and w with loyalty against john that's also another very like you know extreme thing like i've like you know like obviously like loyalty is good and all but <clears throat> his form of loyalty is very extreme like as we see like you know when uh <clears throat> yo says that uh, i've come here to talk to the leader of the ex uh, not of the exile he says that i've come here to talk to the leader he freaks out he's like oh how dare you like you know john uh madam uh, ma uh miss uh miss maiden is the uh leader of the ex laws how do you call me a leader this that it starts <laughs> you know freaking out and everything and yo is like wait a minute like i'm i was talking about the angels i was not talking about the ex laws and he's like oh <laughs> and like i don't know like there's this weird thing with him and <clears throat> so i'm sure there's a reason which probably will come to light in the upcoming few episodes because this feels like we're going to get a little backstory of the ex laws because this guy pops up suddenly uh luckiest lasso and he like you know he is the founder and uh, he's the founder of uh the x laws i think yeah and we can see that they have like a connection a past like he calls him father you know he like you know, so i'm guessing he was under him uh when lucky's was part of the x laws and <coughs> and he obviously marco is angry at him for uh betraying the x laws this and that and <laughs> <laughs> and Lucky's kind of jokes about like oh like you've grown grown so tall you were this little kid back then you know like little we used to call you little Marco <laughs> and <laughs> okay and he also says that you have like you know saved me you gave me a place to live you gave me shelter you gave me kindness you gave me like you know uh, education uh, you took me to different places and yeah he sent me to university how you set up the company i'm grateful for everything including your forming of the x x laws naturally yet unthinkably you left the x laws and joined the uh, enemy okay um yeah so yeah that's what i'm saying you know like so we can see that there's a huge connection here between them and there's probably a backstory uh, which is going to come in the few upcoming one or two episodes because even though all of this is happening we still have not heard anything from Jan. she's underwater you know like doing her usual thing so now there's a few things that i still have kind of a question mark on my head number one why is he he's so fiercely loyal towards Jan? you know because after watching this episode i would have thought that he would probably not trust people not be loyal to people because this guy who probably like you know who took care of him for so long kind of betrayed him and went not betrayed him but betrayed the organization and went to the house team like, you know so it wouldn't su actually surprise me if he was actually the opposite he was not so loyal to uh, anyone else because he already like you know for his loyalty he already got betrayed before so it wouldn't actually surprise me if he was not so loyal to Jan. But that's not actually it. It's actually the opposite. He's extremely loyal to Jan. Which probably tells me that uh, Jan probably did something for him or helped him, uh, you know, which put a bigger impact on him than uh, Luckist leaving the ex laws. Like, you know, Luckist leaving the ex laws was probably a big shock for him. But bigger than that was probably something that John did for him or helped him out. That probably left a huge impression, a huger uh, impression on him. That's why even though like, you know, he already got betrayed before, he still has this fierce loyalty towards John. That's probably it. 
Now, this probably we are going to get a backstory after this. Now, another thing that I'm quite curious about is like they did, they do say that he is like, you know, the founder. So, who is Jan? You know, like then, so was she like a part of the exos from the beginning or was she someone who came later on? How did she become the leader and why did she become the leader? All these questions are still in my head and <clears throat> I'm sure I'll get my answers in the upcoming episodes. And another question is, does Jan know him? I'm talking about Lachist. Does Jan know him? <clears throat> That's another question. <clears throat> so we'll see. You know, and like, and I'm, I'm guessing we're going to get most of our questions answered, especially about Marco, you know, why he's so fiercely loyal towards John, why does he completely like despise how, like, and we, we did kind of get a rough, like, you know, like rough kind of uh, situation before we heard a little rough story of how, like, you know, everyone's, <clears throat> all the people in their sauce, they were somehow affected by, by how, you know, <clears throat> losing their loved ones, this, that. So it's probably something like that for Marco as well. So I'm sure we're going to get to know that as well in the upcoming episodes. And <clears throat> okay, uh, so Luckist's uh, uh, spirit is Lucifer and he says the first angel and it's like a dark, you know, black and yellow color, I think. Yeah, it looks like like all all the like angels are mechas. So, like you know, like so I'm guessing this is probably like a fallen angel or something. And this is Lucifer, so obviously I'm I'm sure it's like a fallen angel. And just like how <clears throat> the Exos calls their you know like the angels angels. This is probably like a fallen angel. So we'll see. Now here's another thing that was weirdly weird in this episode is that. How Luckist was so, um, what can I say, uh, so not polite, but so helpful and kind of like trying to like, you know, help you out. He was like, oh, I've come to help you. You know, isn't he your enemy? Shouldn't we fight together? This, that. Now, I understand. I obviously understand because, you know, like for them, for the, for house minions, they look at you as if how it is how, because how did like you know i'm sure how told them as well that yo is a part of me so that's why i'm guessing they also look at yo as if like a part of how so they give yo the same type of respect that they give how as well so like i'm sure that's the reason but still it does feel kind of weird doesn't it like you know like <laughs> in a way he's supposed to be their enemy so like you know they come and like they talk to yo as if like you know <laughs> They call him Master Yo and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I, I understand why they do that. As I said, like, you know, he's also a part of Yo and uh, not Yo, sorry, how and how, like, you know, how always, like, you know, tries to uh, make everything good for Yo, tries to make him go grow more because he, like, you know, he knows that how Yo is a part of him. So, according to him, when they'll probably be fused together, come together as one. You know, it's essential, most probably it's essential for Yo to have his own growth. So, like, you know, if Yo did not have any growth, then how is this strong person, you know, and when, like, you know, this is all according to how's calculations or scenarios, I think. How probably thinks that, yeah, like, I am so strong, my power, my Furioku is this big, and, and Yo, if Yo does not grow, then when will come as a you know come into one together and become one part of one person you know it'll probably be disbalanced or something maybe he thinks of it as something like that or or who knows you know like and uh or maybe he does kind of care for him as like a brother you know like since they're the part of the same person like it's kind of like a brotherly relationship i don't know but we we've already always seen how showing respect to you most of the times helping him out also kind of uh, a few times you know uh, doing stuff so yeah that's that's probably the reason why why all the other you know house friends are also kind of respect you in that manner but yeah anyways Okay, now next episode we're probably going to get the fight between Luckist and Marco, 
and uh, yeah okay another thing we get to know here is that the clothing that a person wears okay where is it <clears throat> okay um all right uh what's his name luckiest yeah like it says that <clears throat> a battle costume your um very own distinct from your own uniform it is a shaman's state of mind that produces his oversoul so if he can he he could wear clothes that best allow him to enter that state okay okay so to allow in turn to uh, for the creation of a peak performance oversoul so basically it's something that you're comfortable in you know like so i'm guessing whatever shaman the, the particular shaman whatever clothes he feels comfortable in the most he's probably going to make that like the battle suit because that's how he he or she will be able to con concentrate even more and put out the best potential something like that i'm guessing nothing much of a you know? that's why marco con changed his clothes and so did Lukist. And yeah, and we see here Lysark also changing, you know, Lysark has completely changed. He now realized what you wanted to say. According to him now, he realizes that winning and is not everything. You have to win. Obviously, you have to win. But at the same time, after winning, you need to have a smile in your face. Like if you sacrifice everything, you know, for, in the, for the sake of winning. And by the end of it, if you see that, oh, only you were left, you did win the match, but you've lost everyone. You won't have a smile in your face so that's not how you do stuff you should win you should fight and <coughs> at the end you should have a smile in your face so yeah that's a very simple way to like you know explain that i like that so yeah anyways that was it that was this episode this was episode number 38 so yeah if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so yeah that's it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with another episode of shaman king until then goodbye and have a nice day